it's almost the ultimate debate in wearable technology within endurance athletes is whether to use a wrist-based optical uh, heart rate sensor or something like this, which is a chest strap for getting the most accurate data. Today's video is gonna break down exactly how both of those work and which one is better for you to use when you're out there training to get the most accurate data possible. Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to the channel, talking everything science of endurance and sports science in general. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down below to check out any future videos and to watch some of the videos we've already put up, things like VO2 max, what is VO2 max, how to Garmin watches estimate it uh, or calculate VO2 max. There's some strength training stuff on there. Plenty to keep you interested in terms of the science of endurance and breaking it down in a really simple way so that we can all understand it, not just us from a sports science perspective and, and having a background, a couple of years studying at uni, things like that. It's for everyone, athletes, coaches, practitioners, sports science students, whoever's uh, interested in the science of endurance and improving endurance performance overall. This channel is all about it and breaking it down nice and simple so we can all get there together. In terms of today's video, this is also probably the biggest question I get asked all the time when it comes to heart rate data in particular, is what should I use? There's a couple of options out there on the market. There's chest-based uh, heart rate, which is the traditional heart rate strap. There's optical sensors now built into your watch underneath. I've got it in the Apple Watch here. I've also got my Garmin Forerunner. And the question always is, well, which is the best to use? Because either way, I hear stories and I've experienced myself where one or the other hasn't worked. Which one do we actually use and which one is, is probably the better way to go? It can be difficult to work out because companies are coming out with different different technology all the time. And it really is almost an even split. A couple of years ago, we didn't really see too much from the optical space, which is the wrist base, it was mostly chest straps. Now we see more and more optical uh, sensors, but they are starting to get better. So hopefully today you can get a bit better understanding of how they both work and then I'm gonna let you in on what I use and what I think is the best option for athletes to use overall to make sure you get the most accurate heart rate data possible. Because heart rate data is everything in endurance sport. Looking back on training or a race, we wanna understand what your physiology was like. What was your heart rate doing? Have you improved compared to the session you did four weeks ago? Same session, um, we're repeating again. Have you Has your heart rate dropped or lowered? Is that a positive sign of adaptation? All of these things we need to be able to see. And it can be a really useful tool for getting some of that key information from a performance perspective. So to start with, let's break down how a chest strap works. So I'm gonna put up a little animation here and hopefully it's a little uh, pretty easy to follow. Basically how a chest strap works is We've got a couple of components. We've got a Wahoo ticker here that I'm gonna be um, talking through, but they all pretty much work the same. The, the elastic strap that goes around, obviously you can adjust and make it as tight or loose as you like. We've got this receiver, so this is probably the most critical part. This is like a mini computer, if you like. There's gonna be recording your data and then sending that to your watch, to your bike computer, wherever you like to send it. You can send it to your phones now. Typically, most of these heart rate sensors have Bluetooth, so that will go to your phone. Amp Plus will be the signal it's sending to everything else, so watches, sports devices, a sports-specific um, wireless connection, that one. And then we've got a couple of pads underneath. So these pads are probably um, the, the second most critical part in terms of um, getting a heart rate signal because these are the electrodes. So how this works is you place it on, ideally the best place for a heart rate monitor is to sit middle of your chest, just below your pecs uh, for a male, underneath the bra line for a female is pretty much the best spot. Um, and you want these pads to be sitting nice and flat because what that's gonna do is pick up an electrical impulse that is running through the heart that's causing the heart to beat and contract. When that signal is picked up, it hits these electrodes and sends another signal to the little computer inside your uh, little buckle, if you wanna call it on the front, it's going to transmit that heart rate signal to be recorded either on the device. So I know the Wahoo tickers you can, and the ticker uh, X, I think you can record straight into the heart rate monitor itself. And Polar, I know is a good company for that. They record into the heart rate monitor. You can download it later. Um, most others, the Garmin's, uh, etc. typically you have to have another device connected up, a phone, a watch, etc. So that electrical impulse that's sensed by the sensed by the electrodes comes straight from the heart. So it's a very accurate reading. And this is why uh, typically these have been the way to go in the past is it's a very simple and easy way of getting a very accurate reading because it's coming straight from the source. The other one we can go with is the wrist base, which is the optical sensor, which uh, is the little the little funny looking uh, three mostly green lights on the bottom of your the bottom of your watch sits on your wrist. Um, sometimes if you've got your watch a little bit too tight, it's going to leave a little bit of an imprint into your wrist. Um, but essentially, how this works is it emits a light signal through the bottom of the optical sensor. Beams through your skin, doesn't do any damage, don't worry about radioactivity or anything like that. It's perfectly safe. It basically bounces through the blood vessel. So what the, the diagram here is hopefully showing you is that the, the light goes through the blood vessel and it's picking up the way that the blood is flowing through that that uh, that artery or that, that vein um, and understanding then from, from that signal bouncing back, coming back into the sensor, uh, understanding 
what your heart rate is actually doing. So what we're getting here is a bit of an indirect measure because it's not actually at the source of the heart, it's on your wrist, which is therefore a bit of a referred pulse. So we can sometimes see some variation between a chest strap and your wrist based because the electrical signal is, is what's actually firing and causing the heart to go. Higher electrical impulse, more electrical impulses, heart's obviously beating faster, less beating slower. When the blood's rushing through though, it can be a little bit misleading because particularly when we're out doing endurance performance, if we get a little bit dehydrated, blood's a little bit thicker, it may not be moving as quickly, heart might be working overtime to pump it, but by the time it gets down your arm to your wrist, it's actually slowed down a little bit. So we might see heart rates a little bit lower. On the flip side, we may say heart rate's a little bit higher if your blood pressure's up a little bit, it's rushing through the system or you're moving your arm a lot. Um, if you're on the bike and you're just seeing a nice tuck, like, tight position, you're probably not gonna have as much blood flow coming to your arms compared to if you're running and moving your arms or rowing and moving your arms a lot more. So that's where we can see some pretty clear deviation. And this is why I always recommend to athletes, if you can and it's comfortable, wear a chest strap. Um, because like I said, we're getting the direct signal straight from the heart, electrical impulse, um, as long as you have a chest strap that fits well. So it doesn't need to be overly tight. These just need to be, uh, when I say firmly pushed against your skin, you don't want it to be uh, getting to the end of your run or your ride and taking this off and you can see where the heart rate strap is. You want it to be firm, but so it's not gonna slide, but. You, you, you don't need to make it too tight so it's restrictive. That's obviously one of the key negatives of a chest strap is it can feel a bit restrictive around the torso for some athletes, but it is gonna give us a more accurate reading. Why do I use the ticker? And this probably comes to the last part of the video in terms of what products do I use. I use the Wahoo ticker mostly because, hopefully it shows up here um, on the screen if it, if it does. I'm gonna give it a try, we'll see how we go. Uh, maybe. No, it's not gonna show up for you, but it does have two lights in it. There it goes. Hopefully you saw that little blue flash. That means that Bluetooth is connected. There is a red light as well that's gonna tell you that the battery is, uh, is still okay. If that red light doesn't come on, it means the battery is flat, you have to go change it. If the blue light's not coming on, you need to reset your connection. Really simple. The one issue I've always had with heart rate monitors in the past is you never know when the battery's flat. Therefore, you might go out for a run. Particularly the Garmin's don't have these lights on the front. I think Wahoo's one of the only companies that do it. Um, you go out for a run, you go out for a ride and you don't end up collecting any data or you collect part of the data because the, the battery's not working. This one, really simple, the lights are both flashing, you're good to go. It's also quite comfortable, it, it's really easy, it's just you, you unclip one side, wrap it around, clip it in, slide it up and adjust. It, it's, it's as simple as you can get and it connects up with all devices. So I run this uh, running straight into my Garmin head unit on the bike, my Forerunner watch, um, I can run this into my phone if I wanted to. I can run it into my Apple Watch if I'm doing a strength workout and I haven't changed watches uh, for the day. Really versatile. Um, that's why I really like it. And like I said, really, really reliable. Anyone who's got a Wahoo ticker or a Wahoo product in general will know it's a really reliable uh, reliable set of products. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I'm not sponsored by Wahoo. I haven't been told to say this. I'm not being paid to say this. I say it because I mean it. Um, I do think it is one of the better heart rate monitors on the market. Probably the most accurate though. I, I go for something like Wahoo purely from the fact that yes, it is really, really accurate. I find them really good. They're practical because of the lights flashing, etc. If we're looking at the most accurate, typically you're gonna get that from like Polar. It's been an industry leader for years and years and years. The one thing I don't like about Polar is the connectivity can sometimes be a bit um, not too great in terms of interchanging between devices. Something like the Wahoos, because they don't produce their own watches, they produce their own head units on the bike, etc. But because they don't produce their own watches, they will work with a Garmin or with most, um, like a Sunto probably, most sports-based watches or GPS watches. Unfortunately, Polar doesn't always because typically um, what we sometimes find is a little bit difference in, in probably what their software is like, the firmware and the in the device from a Bluetooth connectivity or an Amp Plus connectivity as well. Hopefully this video has been quite useful. Like I said, they're just some of my recommendations around heart rate. Hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight into how heart rate is actually being collected from a wrist-based and a chest strap uh, type device and which way is better to go, probably the chest strap option but it really does also come down to your setup if you want to pay the extra to get the chest strap or you want to use uh, the, the portability of a, of a wrist-based. does come down to that a little bit, but I would recommend for an accuracy of data perspective, definitely go with the chest strap. It's going to give you a much, much better result in the long run. Really appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Uh, comment down below if you've got any questions around heart rate monitoring or heart rate monitors in general. Let me know what you use. Do you use Garmin, uh, Sunto, Wahoo, Polar, what what brands? I know there's a MyZone. What what heart rate monitors do you use? Came to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, that's all for today. So we'll see you in the next one.